On occasion, life will put us in a position where we can either choose to stay where we are and what feels like the safe, comfortable option, or we can take a chance and walk into the unknown. Today, I would love to show you how to make a beautiful hexagon blanket pattern inspired by this concept. The designer, Sharon Simpson, wanted to honor the Fijian side of her family with this pattern, so she named it Tubuthaki, which means growth. I hope this pattern reminds you of how strong you are, and that if your mind is telling you negative things, like I'm not good enough, or I don't deserve better than this, don't listen. Just take the next step and know that you will find your path. You don't have to see the whole journey ahead, just take the next step. And I hope you remember that as you're making this beautiful pattern. So this new pattern consists of hexagons and little half hexagons, and they're just made up of double crochets and chains. So I feel like after one or two, you will have these memorized and be whipping them out in your sleep. I love motif projects like these because you can take just a wee bit of yarn with you, whip out a motif or two, and you don't have to haul the entire project with you. The size is totally adjustable on this, and I really love that you can customize it as you wish. You can get some really different looks depending on which color you choose and how you position them. For a soft, snuggly, lightweight project like this, we chose our hand-dyed Sincere Sock Yarn. It's a blend of superwash merino wool and nylon, so it's gonna hold up well to lots of love. The kit we used is called Someday Hues, but we do have other new kits available for you, or you can choose whatever colors you like. I love how the hand-dyed yarn created a really cool look with these little motifs. It's almost like an optical illusion, and I think it just adds that little bit of extra pop to the project. You can download the pattern and get the yarn at expressionfiberarts.com. While you're there, go ahead and sign up for email updates. That's our special positive little place on the internet, and you're gonna get free weekly knit and crochet patterns. Let's Let's go ahead and get started by learning how to make the full hexagon. For round one, we're gonna start with a magic ring. So just go ahead and grab the tail of your yarn and wrap it around your fingers, making a little X. Go ahead and pinch that, slip your hook under that first little loop there, grab the yarn, and you now have a magic loop. We're gonna go ahead and start with a chain three. One, two, and three. So this does count as a double crochet. Then you're gonna work a double crochet into your little magic ring. Chain two. Now you're gonna repeat five times. Two double crochets, chain two. There's one, all of this into that magic ring. And two, and then chain two. And if it helps, you can give your little magic ring a cinch to tighten it up a little bit to make it a little easier to work into. So continue on, two double crochets, one, two, and chain two, one, two double crochets, chain two, and keep going. The double crochets are forming the sides of your hexagon and the little chains are the little corners as it were. So we've got the original ones and we have one, two, three, four, so we need two more double crochets. One, two. So just make sure you have six sets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're gonna finish off with a chain two and you're gonna slip stitch to the top of this original chain three. And that completes round one. For round two, you're gonna start with a chain three. One, two, three, and you're gonna double crochet into that same stitch where you worked your slip stitch. Then you're gonna double crochet into the next double crochet. And you're gonna double crochet into the chain two space. Now chain two, and go ahead and work another double crochet into that same chain two space. Work one double crochet into each of the next two double crochets. One and two. And we're gonna continue repeating that around. Double crochet into the chain two space. Chain two. Double crochet again into the chain two space. One double crochet into each of those next two double crochets and into the chain two space. 
So if you look, you're starting to get little sections of four double crochets with chain two spaces between. So just make sure that that's what you're seeing and continue on around to the end of your round. So one double crochet into each of the next two and into the chain two space. So we have our little clump of four double crochets. Make sure you get your little corner in there with your chain two. Work another double crochet into that chain two space and into each of the next two double crochets. One and two and into that chain two space as well. So there's our four double crochets. Work your little corner with a chain two. And here's our final little section. One double crochet into the chain two space and into each of the next two double crochets. And when you get all the way around to the end, make sure you work your double crochet into that final chain two space. Make sure you have four. Finish with a chain two and then you can just go ahead and slip stitch into the third chain of that original chain three. For round three, you're gonna start with a chain three and you're gonna double crochet into that same stitch as the slip stitch. Now work one double crochet into each of the double crochets across. So there's one, two, and three. And then same as the previous round, you're gonna work one double crochet into the chain two space, chain two, one double crochet into the chain two space. Then work one double crochet into each of these next four. One, two, three, and four. And continue repeating that around. So work your double crochet into the chain two space and you should be seeing little sections of six double crochets on this round with the chain two spaces between them. So chain two, and then we can work on our next little section of six by working one double crochet into the chain two space, one double crochet into each of the next four double crochets, one, two, three, and four, and then one double crochet into the next chain two space. So there's our six, and just continue around. And around to the end, go ahead and finish off your final little six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain two, and then join with a slip stitch at the top of that beginning chain three. And for rounds four and five, you're just gonna repeat round three. Once you've completed round five, you're gonna have six little wedge sections, each ending with 10 double crochets, and then you're gonna have chain two spaces between all of those. In addition to the full hexagon, you're gonna also need to know how to work a half hexagon for this project. They're very similar to the full hexagon, except instead of working in the round, you're gonna work back and forth. For row one, you're gonna start with your magic ring, just like for the full hexagons. Grab that little X there, Reach under and grab your yarn, and there's your magic ring. Then into that, you're gonna work a chain three. One, two, three, and work a double crochet. So that counts as two double crochets. Then work a chain two, and two more double crochets into your magic ring. One and two, then another chain two, and finish off with two more double crochets. One and two. So you should have six double crochets with chain two spaces between. I've gone ahead and cinched up my magic ring, and for row two you're gonna turn and start with a chain three, which does count as a double crochet and go ahead and double crochet into that same first space there that your chain three is coming out of. Then you're gonna work one double crochet into the next double crochet. Also one double crochet into the chain two space. So it looks like you have four double crochets. Then chain two. Then double crochet again into the chain two space double crochet into each of the next two double crochets, one and two. 
also into the chain two space. So it should be four double crochets there and then a chain two space. Double crochet into the chain two space. Double crochet into the next double crochet. And then work two double crochets into that final chain three. So it's gonna look like you have sections of four double crochets with chain two spaces between. For row three, you're gonna turn and start with a chain three, which does count as a double crochet. And go ahead and double crochet into that very first stitch that your chain three came out of and double crochet into each of the next three double crochets. One, two, three, and you're gonna double crochet into the chain two space. So it should look like you have one, two, three, four, five, six double crochets. Then you're gonna chain two, of course. Then you're gonna double crochet into your chain two space and into each of the next four double crochets. One, two, three, four, and double crochet into the chain two space. So go ahead and count and make sure you have one, two, three, four, five, six double crochets in that little section. Go ahead and chain two and then double crochet into the chain two space and into the next one, two, three double crochets and then work two double crochets into the final chain three into the top of it. So there's one and two. For row four, you're gonna turn and it's basically what we've been doing, same thing. So start with a chain three and double crochet into that first stitch and into each of the next double crochets that you have coming up. So one double crochet into each double crochet and there we go. And then you're also gonna double crochet into the chain two space. So for this row, you should have, count that first chain three as a double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then chain two between your little wedges. So let's go ahead and do that here. Start with a double crochet in your chain two space. Go ahead and double crochet into each of the next six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five and six, and we want one also on this side to extend our little wedge. So we should have eight double crochets for this little wedge, chain two, and continue on with the double crochet in the chain two space, and in each of the next double crochets. And of course, just like on previous rows, you're gonna go ahead and work two double crochets into the top of that final chain three space. Oh, there we go. So one and two. And row five is basically the same thing. Start with the chain three, continue on just like you have in previous rows. You're just gonna make sure that you have 10 double crochets in each little wedge and those will be separated by chain two spaces. Nice and easy, that's why this project is so easy to memorize. Each row is basically the same thing. You're just increasing your double crochets in each section by two each row. When you finish your half hexagon, you should have 10 double crochets in each little wedge separated by chain two spaces. So you're gonna continue making your hexagons and your half hexagons as mentioned in the pattern. And once you have them all ready, you have the really fun part of arranging them and seeing how you want them to be laid out. So try several different ways and see what you love. And when you're ready, you're gonna need to seam them together. So you can choose whatever seaming method you prefer. I'm gonna show you a really easy method here. So here's one way to seam your hexagons together. I've threaded some yarn onto a darning needle and I'm using contrasting yarn but you're gonna to wanna to use the same color as your hexagons. If you're using two different colors, choose the darker of the two. So I've flipped mine over so the back sides are facing up. It can make it a little easier to see when you're getting started with this method. And you're gonna go ahead, find your little chain two spaces, and you're gonna insert your needle into the loop on this chain, chain here that's closest to your double crochet. So grab that chain and grab the chain here in this side as well. Go ahead and Pull your yarn through. 
Now we're gonna walk down the double crochets in the back loops only. So find this first double crochet on this one and in the back loop only, go ahead and insert your darning needle. And then line it up with the double crochet here. And again, only in the back loop, go ahead and slide your needle under and pull that yarn through. Now jump on over to this one here, back loop only, grab that and grab the back loop on this side as well. This is sort of like a ladder stitch. And we're gonna cinch it up when we're done. Continue walking down, grabbing those back loops only. Now I do recommend blocking your hexagons individually before seaming. That can really help to ensure that all of your hexagons are the exact same size before you seam them together. And you're also gonna block the full blanket when you're finished or shawl, whatever you end up making it into. That'll help the border lay nice and even if you do decide to add the border to yours. I also recommend not cutting your tails after blocking your little pieces. Go ahead and leave those. And when you're all done seaming and blocking and everything's finished, then you can go ahead and cut your tails. Weave in your tails and then cut them. So continue back and forth, grabbing just these back loops walking all the way down your side. Grab that final one. Whoops, I went to the wrong one. Into this final one. And then you also wanna make sure that you grab this little chain here and that first chain of the chain two here. Go ahead and slide it through. And when you're all done, you can just give the ends a little tug. Boop, 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 boop and you have a perfect, beautiful little seam, and it will blend in gorgeously when you've used the same color as your little motifs. So once you've seamed all of your hexagons and half hexagons together, you can choose to be done at this point if you like, or if you would love to add a beautiful lacy border, there are instructions in the pattern on how to do that, as well as how to add beads. You can also check out our video on how easy it is to add beads to your crochet. So as you crochet your hexagons and seam them together, know that no matter what you're going through, no matter how challenging, you are not alone. So hang in there, my friend. Use this project as a constant reminder of your worth and watch as you grow right along with this blanket. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I truly appreciate it. Be kind to yourself today. And I'm gonna be back next week with another new pattern and a new yarn base. So I will see you then. Bye-bye.